years ago, most people in Britain grew their own food and built their own houses. But Parliament wanted money to go to war and monoculture offered a quick return. The Enclosures Act of 1750 separated people from their land and workers from their families. Most people now lived in cities. What happened to community? I wanted it back, and I was not alone. Back home, I had friends at Holtzfield, a shallow community on the Gower Peninsula, just a few miles from where I grew up. The profit motivation that forced people off the land in the Middle Ages is still strong today. Holtzfield has been threatened for years by development. You don't expect bailiffs to come smashing through your door, but that's exactly what happened. Thanks to their resistance and a lot of support, Holtzfield has managed to survive and is now home to Paul Wimbush, who is inspired to set up a brand new low impact settlement, the UK's first planned eco village, Lamas. Hi, hi, my name is Paul. I live on the Gower Peninsula with my wife and three children. We live in a, a beautiful wooden house, 10 minutes walk from the sea. I work as a carpenter, which I love. And we have much to be thankful for. It's a very beautiful setup. But I am called to create something more. I'm working with a group of people to establish a low-impact settlement here in Pembrokeshire. So what is this thing called low-impact? What does that mean? Well, I guess to me, low-impact means to live truly sustainably so that your lifestyle can be maintained over generations. So that instead of using or consuming the Earth's resources, you're actually adding to the Earth's resources in terms of biodiversity and soil fertility and, and so on. I guess on the ground, you've got the infrastructure. We're building homes that work with the natural forces, building homes that don't require fossil fuels to heat them, building homes out of uh, the materials that, that we, we find around us. Clay, earth, stone, timber, wool for insulation. There's, there's so many resources just here now that we're planning to create 30 homes from this piece of land. So why Pembrokeshire? Pembrokeshire has a very strong grassroots movement which supports low-impact development. This has been recently spearheaded by Tony Wrench and his campaign to save his roundhouse at Brith Mau. Just talking to people who had applied for planning permission in this area um, sounded like there was absolutely no chance of getting it through at all, like nil, zilch, a waste of £180, complete money down the drain. And what I wanted to do is live in an agricultural workers' cottage that I myself had designed that made sense. And if the authorities um, don't let me do this, well, I'll say, look, something is possible, an alternative is possible, here it is. If I'd have put it on paper, this is what I'd want to design, a wooden roundhouse, and it's going to look like this, they'd have just said, go away. 
as it is, they've got an image to, to work on now. The fact that we've, we're, you're all here, that you've, you're urging us not to take this building down, I find that totally convincing. And I just want to say now, no, we won't take it down. Thank you for coming. I wanted to show that it was possible to build something for two people using natural materials without carpentry skills for less than £3,000. Tone's story has played a key role in persuading planners that changes need to be made. And they've created a new policy which paves the way for developments such as our eco-village to happen. We need to buy the land by next spring which means that we need to get planning permission by this winter. On top of that, we want to work with the local community to find an approach that works for everyone. Mm -hmm.